just sending somebody out. Motor sail, motor, motor, down to Ben Almadena is successful. We have arrived. We're hanging out on the, I'll call it the fuel dock slash uh, uh, reservation dock and checking in. Got a sailboat right up here with the U.S. flag. Be interested to see where they're from. A lot of little boats here. Beautiful day. Lots of people out sailing. A little hazy, and we're about 50 miles from. Gibraltar, so we're pretty much very much near the end of our our long trip across the Mediterranean back to Gibraltar. Our friend Alan will be leaving us shortly, unfortunately. He's been a great help. What did you think? It's been a great trip. Thank you so much. You are a great help to have. <laughs> you have you have no idea after being uh, two people and doing three on three off. Having a third person I tried not is amazing. <laughs> you were not a nuisance. You were a huge help, and uh, and he likes my cooking. Yes, which is which yes. is appreciated. Truth be told, Wendy is a gourmet chef, and it's amazing what she can make it seem. Just we had this uh, pork and peach meal at this fancy Malta restaurant the first night, and she said, "Oh, I think I can do better." And sure enough, last night we had it, and it was. Unbelievable. Off the hook. Oh, thanks. Great cooking, Wendy. <laughs> awesome. So at least my crew knows they won't get, won't starve to death. Clean it off. Great, right, Ellen, get it cleaned off. Alright. What are you doing, Kevin? Putting the benches back together after searching for our old alternator. Why do we need our old alternator? Because our new alternator has failed. What? We spent all that money to put in a brand new alternator and now it's failed? Yeah, it's failed. Why do you think it failed? Because it's a piece of oh, shit? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm pissed. Well, I'm frustrated by it, too. Oh, yep, here's our old alternator. Um, kind of a mess, and luckily I kept it. I think it works. Um, we bought a new alternator thinking that it didn't work. I was thinking that it didn't work, but it turned out that the reason it wasn't showing on our meter was... Um, didn't have it running through the shunt. It's isolated to the negative side. Uh, but so all the negative wires have to go through the shunt or else it doesn't show on the on the Pico battery monitor. So that was the situation there. And then we're about halfway across the med, literally halfway across the med, and the whole system went down, and stopped charging. So now it's a matter of so I called Sterling Power Products, the maker of our of our alternator regulator, and they they gave me some tests to do and came back and said, yep, your alternator's knackered. <laughs> Typical British fashion. Um, put a new one in. 
Well, that's easier said than done. So we're going to do that, but this alternator that just failed is, is, is brand, brand new. new. So now I'm kind of like, okay, okay, so how do you do this? But um, uh, we're going we're gonna to, we're just not going to do that today. It's a, it's a big job. And um, we can use our gen set to recharge the batteries. We have a one, one full 24 hour day to get to Malaga and our batteries will last uh, that long uh, without being charged. So um, we'll, we'll just go with that and I, uh, I'll get myself mentally prepped for pulling the alternator, which is no small job. It's a big, big pain in the ass. So more work. Yeah, so I was going around the boat, you know, making sure that I had um, seizing wire on all of my shackles. Um, I'm getting ready to take my Yachtmaster test, Yachtmaster offshore test in uh, Gibraltar. I'll probably fail it if I'm not doing enough studying, but I am taking a class uh, prep for it um, to help. Uh, but I was wandering around the boat just inspecting all the rigging. We already had a professional rigging inspection done, so I'm a little disappointed they didn't catch this, but check out this cotter pin how it's getting ready to shear off and what that was was I was down in here looking at my four stay attachment and noticed that the heads head head in the bottom feet of the cotter pin were bent outward and what's been happening is that pin has been pulling, wanting to pull out um, heavily, enough so that it started to bend the cotter pin. Um, so I took a, a hammer and, a, and a, actually I had to kind of break apart a, a pipe wrench in order to find something that, would, that I could use to, to, to beat on this pin. So I really didn't have a good angle on it from the other side. Um, but I was able to push it the rest of the way in, which loosened up the hole and I was able to get the old cotter pin out and replace it with this new one. And I'm going to have to keep an eye on that and make sure that that doesn't go anywhere um, later on. But this is a critical system right here. If this was to fail, if this pin was to come out in the kind of weather we've been in lately, the entire rig would go. Um, so we need, to, we need to really watch that sort of thing. And it, it, it sent me running around the boat looking at every cotter pin on the boat uh, to see if there's anything that's similar um, going on. And I haven't found anything like that yet, which is good. Ready to get started on things? <laughs> Heading to Estepona. Um, motor sailing in order to get there on time. We don't really have enough enough wind to push us downwind at a significant speed. We've tried a couple times to reduce engine power. We just got down into the fours and we have places to be and people to meet. We don't have the luxury of sitting around and being pure about it. This is the coast of, coast of Spain down here. It's a pretty well-developed uh, tourist area. Lots of Brits. Uh, an, an incredible number of, 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 of expat, expat Brits all along this coast. I mean, this is the dream of every pensioner in England, Scotland, and Wales is to retire here with sun and plenty of pubs. So you know a couple things happen when you get close to the mouth of the Mediterranean, in Gibraltar, the Straits of Gibraltar. So much water evapor evaporates out of the Mediterranean Sea on the eastern side that it creates a constant inflow of water through the strait. Um, and that can be a real drag if you're trying to go against that current, but one of the things that happens is along the sides, like near the shore, you get a lot of eddies, and those eddies move backwards uh, to the general current direction. That's what's happening here. We got a, a full knot of, um, of current pushing us uh, as we as we we're near Estepona. Estepona is only about, I don't know, 14 miles or something from Gibraltar. Not very far. 
it might be, I'm just guessing at that, but, the, but, but generally, I mean, you can see the rock of Gibraltar from Estepona. Um, so yeah, we're, 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 we're mocking along, and we, the computer keeps on recalculating the arrival time to be earlier. So uh, that's, a, that's always a good thing. You know, I'm not getting terrific boat speed here. We're just kind of moseying along. Uh, but here we are nearing the Strait of Gibraltar. We're finally seeing the rock, rock of Gibraltar with that big lenticular on top of it, out underneath the, our headsail. And you know, we're just, we're just sailing. It's, uh, we don't have any particular need to, to be in Gibraltar fast. We have a reservation. We were able to get ourselves reserved uh, for a spot in Marina Bay, finally, after literally weeks of trying. Uh, we got that squared away. We also did the electronic um, clearance uh, with Gibraltar this morning too. Now it's all taken care of. And here we are along the Spanish coast. Actually, this area we like a lot. It's it's a little less developed than than, than, than further up. Uh, it's it's got still some some nice land and beaches that aren't you know completely overcrowded. Ahoy, skipper. Ahoy, matey. What are you thinking? I'm working really hard here. Yeah, I can see that. I'm keeping us on track. Mm-hmm. So you have, a, so you have a, a course in there that you're following. You're not just winging it. Oh no, I'm winging it. <laughs> We're just heading that way. <laughs> we have a the game of Frogger out here. Yeah. There's so many, so many tankers going by. There's a ton of shipping traffic in the strait. It is really something else. I mean, quite quite intimidating to cross. Mm, yeah. They're in the they're in the kind of mist up there, but there's a bunch of them, ten or twelve easily. So check this out, all of the AIS targets in, in, in the harbor of Gibraltar, this is the bay, it's actually like Gibraltar Bay, um, but these are all big ships, and I don't recall there being this many uh, when, when we were here last time, but uh, we'll see in a minute. Meanwhile, we've got ships anchored out, and we're just going to be going past them. We're on the back side here, back side of the rock. Roger that. As is typical, my use of the camera is leaving something to be desired. Uh, but uh, what's happening here is, is this, this uh, attachment point where the main sheet attaches to the boom has been wearing uh, fairly significantly and it's a metal on metal uh, contact. There's not much I can do about that part, but I'm looking to get this repaired because I can't afford to have this part fail. If we had a, um, you know uncontrolled jibe, uh, it could very easily break this part since it's beginning to wear through. So I'm taking it uh, to a local uh, fabricator named James Pritchard. Uh, he's very good with these types of things and he said that he can 
weld this back. Uh, you, we, we discussed several different methods of doing it. Um, I had originally wanted to cut the um, cut a shackle apart and use a forged shackle, but he said no, he, he could get it fixed. He says it's going to wear again, but it'll just take a long time, um, and that's fine with me as long as the strength is there. But of course, the fitting didn't want to come out of the boom, um, and this is just par for the course when you're in the marine environment. Uh, everything just kind of seizes together over time, and the longer you leave it uh, without taking something apart, the harder it becomes to, 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 to get removed. And so um, I'm going to move on from this uh, to, to show you how we got this thing out. It was not easy. I was unsuccessful on removing three of the four fasteners from the boom fitting. Now it's time to get more serious about it. And I've decided on the creme brulee torch. We found this in um, a house that we used to own. And I kind of threw it in my bag. I'm sure the TSA wouldn't have been happy to see this in, in checked baggage, but um, <clears throat> the, the fuel was removed. So I, I, did, I did spray the fasteners in there with, uh, with, um, with some, with some WD-40, which is the closest thing I have really to, to penetrating oil uh, to try to loosen things up, but I don't think it's going to do much. It looks to me like there's some sort of yellow thread locker on the fasteners, which is keeping it all um, from, from, from being released. It's also just seized on there after many, many years. So I'm going to give this a try and then back to the impact driver and hopefully I can get these things, these things uh, loosened up. I'm trying not to blow myself up because the WD-40 is somewhat flammable. I don't want to have any issues with that. So uh, in order to loosen a fastener with heat, you have to get it pretty darn hot. I do have lines running by in there, so I have to keep those kind of separated. And I'm going to, I'm going to wear gloves to try to protect my hands. So obviously the, the two tools I really couldn't do without were going to be this impact driver and this creme brulee torch. You could use a regular blowtorch. Surprisingly, we don't have one on board the boat, and largely that's because it's very hard to find proper gas bottles and everything else here in Europe. Um, just a, one of those odd things. Obviously, we also needed a, uh, um, a hex key, a large hex key set, but this alone wouldn't have done it. It would have stripped out the hex drives on these fasteners. Um, the one warning I'll give you about using the impact driver, didn't, I, I, this is kind of a tool of last resort for me, because it has a tendency to gall threads. And what that means is that with stainless steel, if you use this tool, um, oftentimes what'll happen is it'll break the thread off inside and roll it into a ball, which will then grind its way through the rest of the threads as you remove this. This is really a tool generally for loosening um, a fastener, but the second it's loose, you don't use it anymore um, unless it just spins out on you like it did on the last fastener. But you notice on the other ones, I would remove the hex key, the hex drive bit uh, first, and then use the manual um, manual uh, tool to, 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 to pull it the rest of the way out. Uh, and that just kind of helps. It also helps you feel if there's anything going on in there. So the guys just kind of welded in that area where it had been worn. and. Um, and so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna just reinstall it and it should be, should be back to being pretty good. So what I did also is I got some, some, some big, big meaty cap screws. I'm liberally applying uh, blue Loctite uh, to make sure that um, these things don't go anywhere. Applying this by hand, not with any type of machine. You want to really have control over how tight you torque these on. So, 
you look in here, you can see what's going on is that the, the I've got I've got nuts on top of the bare threads that stick out the top because these fasteners were a little long and they were the shortest ones they sold. Um, so what I've done is I've put the nylock nuts on the top to really protect the the lines from chafing against the exposed thread. Uh, that's that's really the main thing. Plus, there's the added benefit of having nuts on top because the threads in the in the fitting uh, were pretty badly abused when I when I removed everything with. Uh, with a uh, impact driver. Um, so anyway, that, that's that's where we stand. I think we should be good. And um, we're all back. And this goes on like this. I'm gonna put Tef Gel again on the fa four fasteners that hold the boom end fitting on um, so that we don't have any um, issues getting it back apart. Uh, anytime you've got stainless going into aluminum, you really wanna watch. A little of this stuff goes a long way. You don't need to overdo it. Uh, you just need it to be on there. Pretty much all, all that counts. Okay, and now we're going to need to raise the topping lift some more. Um, hold up, we have to release the main sheet to do it though. I think that's it. Okay. I got to get I got to get this tightened up and get some seizing wire on it. As you can see, it's getting dark out. It's down there, Wendy's, Wendy's calculating uh, estimated positions uh, using a hand bearing compass, and we're using paper charts. I'm doing my uh, Yacht Master class with our instructor, Gavin, who's basically doing a uh, kind of a prep course for the, it's for the, for the, for the examiner. Uh, we're not using, not using the chart plotter although we are on autopilot, but we calculated the, the course that we're going to do um, to ca account for, for tidal streams and, and tide, uh, and, and we had kind of chose a, um, chose a target speed, but the, the speed of the boat, I mean, this is part of the calculation, but we're just getting incredible push where, where we've got 2.2 knots of, of additional um, speed through water. Um, the, uh, the speed over ground, I should say. Uh, speed through water is around six, and uh, we're seeing an eight point two. And we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit that headland over there. Um, but, and we got dolphins all over the place. Um, and we're in the Strait of Gibraltar here. Uh, but given the fact that we've that we've moved so fast and, and basically moved in front of um, the tidal calculations that we've had. Uh, we, we're, we're probably going to have to make a correction. So that's what Wendy's doing. She's down below, making sure that, that that's uh, we're, we're doing this the proper way. We're coming up on coming up on Smear, Morocco. This is the real Morocco, not Spanish Morocco where we were before in Suda. And um, we've been promised that it's like a different world. So let's see about that. Uh, in the meantime, we've been taking bearings off the lighthouse back there on the point and various landmarks along the way and trying to, you know, lock into our position at any given point. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're going to take every little wind you. Not, not to distract you, Kevin, while you're wrecking our boat, uh, but what are you doing? We're sailing into a harbor. Something that we would normally wouldn't do, but Gavin's doing the yacht master training, and we trust that he's not going to let us kill ourselves <laughs> and him in the process. Gavin, are we going to kill ourselves? No. <laughs> Excellent. This is Gavin. He's an amazing instructor. My theory about hitting rocks is that you can always walk on. That really encourages me. 
So what we're doing is we're sailing down this channel into Alcadesa. Um, got a breakwater here on our lee, nice lee shore. And we're practicing getting in in some medium winds. And uh, 20 knots. We, we left um, Greece you know, about a month ago and, and just went all the way across from Greece, all the way to Cartagena, Spain, stopping in, um, in Malta and southern Sardinia, but otherwise just, just running completely across the entire Med um, in a three-week period of time. And eventually made it here to Gibraltar, which is where we are now. People who watched our videos probably recognize Gibraltar. There's the rock of Gibraltar right there. And um, then once I was here, I took my yacht master exam. I uh, I qualified for yacht master offshore last night, um, which is a pretty big deal. I mean, you have to really have a lot of mileage. Um, you know, half of it, or something like 1,500 miles of it, has to be in tidal areas. So, not in the Med, not in the Caribbean, um, not in some of the other places around the world that don't have uh, very much tide. So, I'm exhausted today. I'm <laughs> just absolutely it's just beat. Um, but. Uh, Either way, it's, it's, it feels pretty good. And then tomorrow, we get our water maker over in Spain. Uh, not, not install it, obviously, but just get it here. And then we take off for the Canary Islands. So we're, we're really behind on our, our videoing. I um, hope you guys uh, st stick with us. Uh, we have lots of cool, cool video uh, to show you, but uh, we just haven't had time to edit any of it. Um, but we're doing so now, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll hopefully get back in the groove. This is the Jasmine Coral Jay. These guys are rock stars. It's a bed and breakfast. If you're gonna stay in Jib, this is the place to be. You actually do karaoke during the day or early evening during cocktail hour. Here's me filming Kevin. Kevin thinks I move the camera too much. 